Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time we're talking about the early game of Battle Brothers. I think this is one of the areas of the game I get the absolute most number of questions about, and I think there are a lot of things I can share with you guys that should make that early game a little bit smoother, a little bit more enjoyable, and get that run started in the right way. Okay, so let's talk about it from a kind of top-down, basics, all the way uh, approach. And let's get started with this. So the very first thing you're going to do is evaluate your seed that you're playing on. Most of the time, any seed you're playing on is adequate. Sometimes you're looking for exceptional seeds, but roughly what I look for in a seed is this. I would love to see, this This seed is a totally random seed. This is just the first seed I picked up. This seed is probably mediocre, I would judge it. But I'm looking for a couple things if I can. I would love to have seaport access from north to south. So uh, cities on the coast with this little building here, uh, that's a seaport essentially, a dock I think they call it. And it would be great if one of the cities up north had a seaport as well. That would allow late game travel very, very quickly between the southern area to the northern area, which lets me be a very efficient about buying tools at good prices and recruiting from uh, citadels, recruiting from the places where I'll get high level brothers, uh, high quality late game brothers that is, and also trade goods. This city, this seed doesn't really have that, oh well. The next thing I'm kind of looking for is I'm looking for access to the wilds. For me, one of the things I enjoy most in the game is busting the late game camps, particularly orc camps in the late game. So what I'm looking for is identifying where are the wilds likely to be. On this map, the wilds are to the east. Civilization is to the west with a little bit of a blank spots in there. But the bulk of the wilds is going to be over here in this gray area uh, to the east. So what I would like to see on a map like that is I would like to see re uh, regular sources of tools close to the wilds so I can dip into the wilds, take fights, come back, restock on tools and sell, then go back into the wilds relatively quickly. Uh, on this map, it's not great for that. You can see a couple towns on the east, but they aren't towns with particularly high modifiers for tools. We're really looking for citadels and places. I think it's with, uh, I think it's called a workshop. Uh, yes. Uh, so we're looking for citadels and towns with workshops uh, next to the wilds. This citadel is actually really well placed for that uh, and able to do that. The northern wilds become very accessible with something like that, but the southern wilds are a little bit inaccessible on this map. Um, and then finally, you're looking for a combination of places that you can recruit the brothers that you want. Uh, northern citadels are good for things like hedge knights. Northern citadels with uh, armories are excellent, or barracks rather, are excellent for that type of recruitment. You'd like to see hunter's cabins on the map if you can. Hunter's cabins give you access to the absolute best archers in the game, that type of thing. Um, that's always going to be a kind of optional thing of how deep you want to go into that in the sense that depends how much you want to fix the seed, how much you want the seed to be an excellent seed versus the challenge of dealing with the seed as it is. Um, you can keep re-rolling for maps with tons of hunter's cabins or just kind of take what you get. Uh, this actually, this map actually has a fair number of hunter's cabin. Finally, I'm looking for an area in the early game where I can make some money, level some early game brothers and uh, do that either through missions, trade goods, or both. Um, that for me often is open area like these plains with not too many mountains. I don't want mountains and swamps forcing me to fight in terrible terrain or otherwise restricting my movement. And I want to have access to a couple towns in the early game that you can take missions from. In the very early game, you cannot take missions from noble houses, which restricts the areas that you can take missions from. You will be unable to take missions from uh, citadels. There'll be no missions available for you or walled towns like this one here. So what you're looking for is a group of early game towns, preferably fairly accessible by road, that are towns like this, or like that, uh, where you can get missions from. And here, this start is okay for that. Uh, the southern towns, this one you can't. This is a little bit far away. But um, these three you can. Uh, that one you can. This one kind of segues nicely into that. Um, if you are looking for another type of start, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later in the video, if you're looking for a raider start, you would like to see um, one faction that would be the faction that you would play with as like your friendly faction, uh, having good sources of tools and ready access to the other factions so that you can gank their caravans and their armies and then retreat back to safety to sell your gear, uh, get tools and otherwise continue being a raider. But that's roughly what I'm looking for in an early game start. Um, if you want to go even in more depth, you can look at your starting brothers. Uh, starting brothers for a lot of the seeds, it depends which ones you depends which backgrounds you start with, but a lot of the backgrounds start fixed. Uh, in other words, the stars will start fixed and often the perks will start uh, fixed based on the seed. And just the what will actually change is the numbers like 60 and 3, it might be 59 and 5 or whatever else. Um, but as long as they're not absolutely terrible, this is fine. This is a totally playable seed. It's not particularly great, but it's fine. 
we can definitely make this seed work. So what do we want in the very early game? All right, so we have our starting brothers. We've headed to our first town. You may or may not have fought Hoggart uh, or uh, the very first mission, depending on what you're doing. And we head to our first town. Um, for me, uh, one of the things I immediately want to do is I want to get my number of brothers up. At the moment, I have three very good brothers. These are my starting brothers, one of whom will probably be an archer and two of whom will be decent frontliners. We hope this guy rolls well to uh, shore up his stats. But in the early game, these are very good stats in the early game. We're looking at 62 starting melee defense and eight starting, or excuse me, melee attack and eight starting melee defense with 53 HP and 100 stam and 40 resolve. Those are excellent stats. Same with this guy. 60 starting attack, 3 me uh, melee defense with uh, stars, which means it has a higher chance of growing at a good rate. This one, in fact, some of these are forced rolls. This is a forced roll. Uh, and these are always going to be good rolls, basically. Uh, and this is with 63 HP and 100 uh, fatigue. These are excellent brothers. We don't want to lose these brothers. These are brothers who have late game potential. They're going to grow into late game monsters if we can keep them alive. So the first thing we need is we need fodder to protect them. We need people who can take the hits, go into the dangerous situations in the early game. And we're in our first town. We're hoping to see in our first town is some missions. Excellent. We have missions available to us. Uh, and we're going to want to take missions in the early game to get money. Um, all right. I would hire people here. And the first thing I would look for is cheap backgrounds of decent backgrounds. If you like, you can check my Battle Brother builds background to a uh, sheet. Uh, on that sheet, there's one of the pages on it is uh, backgrounds, and it will show you what stats you're, uh, you will get, the range of stats that you can get from any given background. But for me, having played a lot, I can identify quickly scanning through this, what are the good backgrounds to pick up. Um, this guy would be very good to pick up. Brawlers tend to have very good stats. Their downside is they're fairly expensive over time. Uh, their, their daily wage is fairly high uh, and they don't come with any gear, but their higher price is very cheap. This guy would definitely be someone we'd hire. Um, Killer on the run is okay. Uh, rat catchers are kind of bad, but at this point we just want cheap. Cheap is our most important attribute here in the early game. So let's grab a couple people. It doesn't really matter. They're warm bodies to take a hit. That's what we care about. I'd probably grab this guy as well, the killer on the run. I'm not sure what else we're going to have, especially if I'd already done uh, my due diligence, which I didn't do here in the video, uh, which is to check the missions. So this is a... Um, a delivery mission. Delivery missions are fine. They're not really what you want in the early game. What you're looking for in the early game is you're looking for fights versus humanoids. Uh, you're happy to fight thugs. You're happy to fight a mix of thugs with one or two raiders. More on that in a minute. And you're happy to fight like ancient auxiliaries or possibly, very possibly, a very small orc camp if you could find just orc young uh, in a very small orc camp to begin with. Because your goal is to gear. You don't start with much and you don't start really with enough um, enough gear to gear the people you're going to hire, especially if you hire cheap backgrounds. So what you're looking for is an early source of weapons and armor above 20. And uh, thugs and poachers and that type of enemy are going to be great for that. Okay, so we've hired some brothers. Let's take a look at these missions. Um, this is wants us to do a fellow called Goswin the Guildmaster. He's waiting in Sudheim. Um, in general, negotiating contracts, saying we need to be paid for this, doing this once is in general a good thing. What it's going to do is it's going to increase the amount of money you get on average for a mission at a slight standing hit with the town uh, by doing that, by asking for more money. In the very early game, I actually don't do this because right off the bat, you're going to be offered a ambition. And one of the ambitions you can be offered right off the bat almost always shows up as the first two. It might even be forced to be the first two is get friendly with a single town. This is a very easy uh, thing to accomplish, uh, but if you're taking small standing hits, it makes it a little bit harder to do that. So I almost always go just for uh, not negotiating the first couple contracts until I get friendly with the town. And then I negotiate pretty much all future contracts all the way through the rest of the game, unless I'm trying to build specific standing with a single town. For example, if that town has a very good trade good or a couple trade goods and I wanna keep that price super good for me, then I just won't negotiate contracts with them because I'll make more money in the long run off trading. So anyways, Let's take a look at this. This is Sudheim about a day to the southeast. That's not too far, and we're going to have to move around to get contracts. So this is maybe something we'll think about, or rather, we're going to have to move around to keep getting missions in the early game, and that's being the best way probably until you get a little bit of gear to uh, progress in the game. This is something we'll consider. So we'll say we'll need some time to think about that, leave that up, take a look at the other mission. The other mission is really good for us. Um, this is a early game brigand mission, which is exactly what we're looking for. Brigands have been tearing up these parts for too long. I sent a lad to find them, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, let's talk money. I accept your offer. Uh, drive off brigands at crumbled shelter northeast is exactly what we're looking for. It's going to be early uh, poachers or early um, thugs, which we're looking at. Uh, our people, we have six people right now, three of whom we've kind of identified, uh, seven people even. Let's go take a look at our brothers, get a sense of what we're working with. 
So we have our initial starting three brothers who are valuable. Um, generally, back rank in the early game is much safer than front rank. This is true throughout the course of the game in general, but particularly true in the early game. Um, we don't have any back rank weapons, so it's a little bit difficult to keep them in the back rank, but it's something to think about. Um, all right, what do we actually pick up for our brothers? The thing you should do when you hire new recruits is identify their value. Identify what they have going for them and how valuable we find them as characters. This guy is a pessimist, paranoid. Paranoid is an interesting one. It's actually not particularly bad. Most of the time we're slower than the enemies anyways and getting free ranged and melee defense is nice. There are some downsides to it. The initiative hit generally isn't an issue, but sometimes uh, pessimist is kind of pain in the ass. Um, but his stats are okay, 34 resolve. We're looking for uh, late game frontliners around 50 resolve, early game frontliners, 40 is probably about what you're hoping for, uh, even after a couple points. So this is fine at 34, 54 HP is fine, 53, five is fine with stars in the right places. This guy isn't bad. Um, I name them, so I name them for my, um, for my viewers generally, but here I also title them, and I title them with something that lets me keep track of them. For this guy, he's probably early frontline, but he's maybe like decent frontline. And for me, this is just, when I select them in combat, uh, partially the gear will tell me how good they are because I will put my better gear on people I want to have survive, but partially the title will tell me just in combat, is this a brother I care about keeping alive or not? And if the answer is no, then I'm gonna put him in more dangerous spots or rather he's gonna take the positions that are dangerous positions that have to be covered. I'm not gonna throw him away, but I'm gonna use him to uh, get value in a fight for us. All right, uh, this guy's an impatient rat catcher, 31 resolve, triple resolve star, fatigue, 49, five with a star there. This is a little bit less good. I probably use a, I use early frontline for this, and this basically just references someone who's fodder. It's not someone who's so terrible that I want them dead instantly because they're total trash, but he's pretty close to total trash. Uh, the next one, uh, very similar. This guy is actually total trash. Drunkard's pretty bad. It takes away our melee attack. Um, he doesn't have stars and melee defense and doesn't have any melee defense there. This guy is total trash. So this guy is, I would call him die now probably. And then finally, this guy actually is pretty, oh, it's one of our starting companions. No, this is the brawler, okay. Spartan brawler with survivor with 54 and stars and there and there. Um, the, a quick rule of thumb for figuring out how good your brothers are going to be is just by thinking about the fact of averages and the fact you have 10 levels. So on average, the range, so the roll for a melee attack skill is between two, excuse me, between one and three. That's your range on any melee skill. Uh, same with uh, melee defense. You can roll between one and three. For ranged attack, you can roll between two and four, uh, et cetera, right? So you, once you know these, you can work that out. So then you take the average of that and multiply by 10 because there's 10 levels. So the average of one plus three is two. Two times 10 is 20. So he's going to get 20. On average, he's going to pick up 20 more melee attack, so 74. And then each star is essentially five extra average melee attack, uh, five extra average stat across the course of his leveling. So he will get 20 average plus 10. So he's gonna pick up 30 average. So he's gonna end up with 84 attack and 25 melee defense. That's decent. For an early game brother, that's actually fairly good. For the mid to late game, that's kind of where, where that's about what I aim for, for brothers. His stamina is okay, his resolve's okay, his HP's okay. So this guy is actually pretty decent. So this is again, I would even consider him, um, this is like a potential, this is like an early two-hander potentially. Um, early like sword two-hander or something, right? Where his accuracy isn't perfect, but if he survives, he's gonna be pretty good. So from pure value from the recruits we picked up, um, our three starting brothers are much more valuable than any of the other brothers we picked up. They just have better stats all around, but something like early two-hand, decent frontline, uh, early frontline, and then die now for value. So the least valuable brothers for me get a shield and they get whatever weapon we have available. So this is probably a good time to transition into talking about what I'd pick up. Um, for a very early game fight like this, the first fight of the game, I don't want to buy much. I'm going to accept trading crappy characters away for gear, and we're hoping to get weapons in particular off of uh, the, the enemies we're going to fight right off the bat. There are two exceptions to this, and actually this is a really good, unscripted too, like I haven't looked at this yet, very good um, uh, demonstration of this. Picking up a second bow is actually really good. You start with one ranged weapon here. And one of the ways that the enemies determine, humanoid enemies determine whether or not they will come to you and attack you, or whether or not you have to come to them to attack them, is based on the number of ranged units you have. And it doesn't really, it doesn't care too much about your range skill. So it's not like you have to have good brothers for this. So for me, looking at this, 
We have cheap ammo pack at 52 and a half damage bow. Anytime the weapons or, or armors are at, at a pretty decent amount of damage, then um, you can pick them up fairly cheaply. So I'd grab this bow because this, oops, I didn't want to grab that. I would never buy, well, I might buy the pitchfork there, but I don't remember what his price was. That was an accidental click either way. Um, so picking up that bow means they're more likely to attack me. Even if they have a single um, poacher now, we will have two range units. They're going to come to us. Coming to us is what we want them to do. We do not want to have to approach into their arrow fire or into their spear walls or that type of thing. The other thing I would pick up here is a hat. Hats are very valuable, um, especially wounded hats. This one isn't particularly wounded, but I'm still probably going to buy it. A stray hit to the head will often kill your brothers outright with this low of a, this low of a level. So we don't want that. And then finally, a knife. Knives are excellent. We are going to be using daggers uh, extensively in the early game. And right now, we probably start with one dagger. So this will double our ability. And actually, we bought a character with a dagger with a sharp dagger, which is excellent. Uh, and then we're going to actually buy a dagger. This now brings us up to three ways to puncture people, which is our primary source of armor in the early game. So, all right. So there we go. We've picked up our brothers. Uh, I would gear them accordingly. As I was saying, um, I bring... Uh, Brothers who I expect to put in bad situations, I give them shields for the extra 15 melee defense, which is a lot in the early game. And this is the guy who's going to be most designed to go into early situations. I don't have a lot of gear. I'm not going to risk good gear on him. Uh, I might do something like this for him. Uh, he's going to die relatively quickly, but he's going to take a couple extra hits because of that shield. And I'm going to know that he's the most disposable and I'm okay with that. The other brothers, I'm going to give a mix of weapons based on their attack skills. Um, I'm looking for uh, the the... The more mobile you are, the less at risk you are. So a one-handed weapon is better than a two-handed weapon in terms of risk. Um, I'm not going to use very many shields here. If there's a second shield, I might pick up a second shield. Uh, probably not buying a buckler, but I might buy a buckler. Bucklers are pretty bad, but maybe would do that here. Uh, 10 melee defense is okay here to have the second brother uh, on, the, on the sides. The sides are going to be the position where you're most attacked because you get kind of partially surrounded with like two or three brothers next to you as opposed to a, a line where the guys in the middle are only going to have one to two brothers on them. So they're the riskiest spot. I tend to put shields there. I like a mix of shields on the end and then one or two handed weapons on everybody else uh, using a double grip, which is when you equip a one handed weapon, but uh, don't have a shield with it and then two-handed weapons. And the goal is to be mobile and have DPS. Uh, a lot of the early game fights are about breaking the morale of your opponents, and you have to do that by hitting them and hitting them hard. You need to do HP damage to be trigger morale checks, and you want to do a lot of HP damage. Killing the enemies before they act is very, very important. Your brothers are bad, they're gonna get hit. If the longer they are in a fight, the worse it is. Um, I'll break down the anatomy of like a raider or, or um, thug fight a little bit later, or I can link you to uh, one of the guide videos I've already released talking about how to take on early game raiders, which is probably going to be uh, a more in-depth breakdown than I'll get to in this video. But anyways, so Gear Brothers, based on their value, frontline needs a little bit heavier armor than backline, especially in the very, very early game where there aren't a lot of archers. You can get away with running 10 or even no armor on your back rank. We're not going to run all three of these back rank. We're going to end up running two back rank and one, uh, and then it looks like, what, five in the front rank for our first fight which is fine. We'll look for the second guy with the most range skill. 41 earlier. See, he's got the better range skill, but he's less valuable. We'll keep him in the front. Let's look for another valuable brother that we would like to keep in the back. 38 seems fine, but we kind of need his melee accuracy. That's probably who we're bringing anyways. Maybe Raban with 35 would be our other archer. That would be fine. Uh, all right, let's give him the smock and then give our most valuable brothers the most amount of uh, gear. And then all the way down like that, give them hats on the front line, give them weapons. We have a reach weapon, which is a nice addition. So we actually can run three in the back. We did buy that. That was an accidental buy, but maybe fine here. We, did, we, we do want a weapon on everybody going in and we'll take daggers going in. Don't really care too much about what weapon uh, is equipped here. This guy could even be a fist. It doesn't matter. He's gonna be there mostly for placing placement. And in the very first fight, we have those two nets. Use, use all the equipment that you pick up. Nets are great. Nets uh, will reduce initiative of an opponent, reduce their melee defense, and reduce their melee attack, and cost them an action to break the net. So if you have a couple nets early game, it's really good for slowing down a target or isolating a target or setting a tagger, uh, target up to be daggered. Okay, so that's a lot of breakdown of what you do with the first very stuff. So we're looking for humanoid fights, which we just found. We're going to go do that. That will be great. Uh, in general, the types of missions you're looking for are... Exactly what I said, humanoid fights. Stay away from uh, animal fights if you can in the beginning. You will occasionally get them and sometimes it's worth it. Like for example, if there's a terrorized or missing villagers modifier on the town and they have stuff that you wanna buy at cheap, then uh, you may consider doing that. Um, 
this is a mod, but it's a very easy to uh, download mod. And it basically tells you what each of these things do. I'll provide a link in the description where you can find this mod, but this is good to know. For example, at this town, this is 293 is not great. You can see the value of the tool was 200. This is 293. So it's actually quite a lot more than they're selling for. But let's say this was like 220, the tools. And they also had this rated modifier. Then what that would tell me is that this city sells tools really cheaply. And if I complete a mission that removes the ambush trade routes, which is generally the brigand mission that we're about to do, then this would be a really good spot to buy tools. And in general, one of the things you want in the early game is identify locations that will sell you cheap tools, cheap medicine, and cheap ammo because those locations, uh, and then also that have trade goods. Those are like the four things you're looking for from a town, because then you can keep coming back to those cities again and again, uh, emphasize doing missions there to get good standing with them, which will further reduce your costs and will make your overall operating costs much better across the course of a game, starting from that area. All right, so we're looking for humanoid missions. Why not animal missions? Um, the animal missions are slightly dangerous in the early game, and they don't provide any loot that you can really use. They don't provide armor, they don't provide weapons. And that's exactly the only things we're interested in, in the very early game, is bringing our brothers from a bunch of people wearing smocks, holding knives, to brothers wearing, uh, using weapons and armors that are actually gonna allow us to fight back uh, efficiently. Okay. Um, all right, so let's say, uh, I don't want to do this in the video here. Again, I'll leave it here. But let's say we had gone and done that mission and we've come back and now we're deciding when we get here that there aren't any other missions in the town except the one escort mission. Do we want to take the escort mission or do we want to set out on our own? Some of the things to look at is the escort mission is bringing us down to Sudheim. Sudheim may or may not have a mission of itself, but we know we can't get missions from this other city because it's a walled town. It's too early for that. There isn't a lot in here. We could potentially sweep up through the, um, the fog here looking for an early camp, but probably after just one humanoid fight, we're probably not gonna have the weapons to take on a small camp. We're probably gonna need one or two more fights really to get just a basic amount of weapons for that. Um, so probably we're not gonna end up doing that, uh, that escort mission. We'll probably just end up checking the towns closer to us. But in general, think about where the escort missions are bringing you, either the delivery or the caravan escort. If they're bringing you somewhere you already want to go and you have no other missions in the area, that's just being paid for something you're doing already. You should definitely pick those up. Okay. Um, all right, uh, the types of things we're gonna be doing. So let's uh, just quickly run up to this fight, get a sense of what we're working with. So this is an early game fight. Uh, we're fighting five thugs here. There's no ranged units from them in the very early game. There aren't a lot of ranged units. Uh, and we can identify, we, we should be identifying when we start these fights, what we're up against. So I can do this visually because I've played this game a lot. If you haven't done this, uh, if you haven't played the game a lot, this may be a little bit harder, but you can start by looking at your armor and then looking potentially at the wiki. This is a 55 armor. That's a 65 armor. That's a 35 armor. And that's like a 10 armor. Um, this is a tier one axe. So three levels of three tiers of weapons for this. This is a tier one axe. This is like a tier 0.5 club. That's a uh, tier two dagger and that's a tier one club. So of these weapons, that's the most dangerous, does the most damage. Um, the flail is that's a tier one flail is fairly dangerous. We don't have any headgear, but it's a very low damage early game weapon. We want this guy's armor. This guy has 65 armor. That's a big upgrade for us. These secondary ones of 55 armor are also interesting to us, but we're not gonna be able to take all of the gear from all of these brothers. So our goal probably is to focus this guy down as soon as possible. He has a dangerous weapon that will kill us. And if it hits head, does additional damage. So it's spiky, it's damage. There's high variance on that weapon. He does have armor we'd like, but we're not gonna worry about it too much. We'll kill him first. And then we'll try to pick up the armor off this guy who has a very weak weapon. So he can be left alone for a long period of time without him doing a whole lot to us. And this guy who has um, a weapon that's a little bit more dangerous, but also has armor we want. So our plan is to kill these three, puncture those two. Uh, down to get their gear. And this is how you should approach every single poacher or raider fight that you're going into. What is the gear my opponents have? How am I going to get it and set up to do that? So some of the things we can do, we will pass our initial round. We want them coming to us and they will come to us. We have two archers, so they're forced to come to us. So they will approach us is we can start thinking about, well, where are the dangerous situations? Interestingly, we have a choke point there. This is a forest mission. Forest missions are um, generally easier than non-forest missions. So you could, because you can control the placement a lot better, especially if you have range superiority. If they're gonna come to you, then you get to control the, control the choke points. On something like this, we know for a fact that these two positions are bad for us. We don't want the opponent ever having elevation uh, advantages relative to us. So if we fight them, we wanna fight them at least one tile back from the elevation so they can't stand on elevation and do something for us. 
This tile is a little bit interesting because right now only a dagger is there. The dagger is a little bit dangerous for us in the early game because our, our melee defense is so bad that it can hit us with punctures. But uh, but uh, poachers are pretty bad at uh, or not poachers. Um, thugs are pretty bad at accuracy too, and they don't have dagger. And they don't have specializations unlike raiders. So this guy's only going to hit us twice, and he may or may not actually connect us. We can actually block this choke point entirely by moving a brother to there, or we can do something like set up a concave right here and allow them to come in one at a time, or three of our brothers get to attack them. Either is fine. We want to kill both these guys. I'll probably use the concave here for just the because uh, I want to kill them fast. And then I'll try to set up something like putting the shield brother over here so that as these guys come in, I can get a shield next to the club so that it will take him a while to kill my guy so I have time to kill the rest and then set up the dagger. Okay, so that's how we approach this game. I'm not going to run this fight out. Uh, it doesn't seem necessary. You guys can check out uh, how to do these fights in general. Um, oh, just one more tip before we do that. Um, try to use adjacency bonuses as much as possible. Um, for every one of your brothers adjacent to a target, you get plus five uh, melee accuracy. So if this guy moves to here and we get set up a concave like that, we'll have three guys. That's two extra. Every brother there will have two friends next to him. Uh, two, excuse me, two other friends surrounding that opponent. So each of my three brothers will have plus 10 melee accuracy. That's super important. Another uh, general rule of thumb is to use uh, very accurate weapons. We don't have much weapon selection here because we don't have a lot of weapons yet, but after a couple fights, we will. Spear has plus 20 to its hit modifier. Uh, swords have plus 10. Early game, you're going to be using a ton of spear and swords uh, because that's just what you're going to have available to you, uh, to you to actually have your brothers hit anything. Okay, um, so that's what we do here. Um, now I'm going to transition a little bit more to uh, less of the detail oriented and more of kind of the overview of what should you be doing. Like what types of things are you wanting to do at this stage in the game? Um, early game camps are great. Um, if you can find them with small numbers and anytime you go into a camp, it will show you the numbers. It will use a code. It will say a few or some. A few is two to three. Some is four to six. Um, you can find these um, numeric conversions either in a mod that will convert them automatically, give you the range so it doesn't cheat at all. It's just telling you what that means. Or you can find them in my channel by typing exclamation point BB size. And that will give you the uh, idea of how many of each type of enemy you're going to be fighting. The rough goal with that is get a sense of your enemy walking into it if you can handle it. You're trying to find camps that have a mix of thugs and raiders. Those are your ideal camps or ideal running, uh, random groups running around the map or ideal missions because raiders are going to have better gear than thugs. You're going to see things like pikes, things like uh, up to 115 armors on them, uh, other things that you want to be doing. Your goal in the early game, farm humanoids for weapons and gear. Can't, I can't emphasize that enough, that that needs to be what you're fighting. If you're taking risks on animals from time to time, okay, but be aware they are risks and the, the risk to reward is pretty high uh, for that. You don't want that. You want low risk to reward. You want to have a higher reward ratio at the end of that. And the animal fights in the early game tend to be pretty just bad for you overall. You might occasionally lose brothers to overwhelms. A lot of the effects are overwhelms too. Spiders, um, the ghouls, and the uh, wolves are all pretty much overwhelmed style enemies, right? Where it can snowball one way or the other, and it's about hitting things, getting things off the field quickly so you don't get overwhelmed. These are all things your brothers are bad at early game. They have bad armor, they have bad melee defense, they have bad accuracy. What you want to be doing is taking the fights that are going to gear your brothers up. Um, you need to make a decision at some point too about caravan raiding. Um, it is a very powerful start to raid noble houses caravans. Uh, it will piss off factions. Factions on the map will go red. To you and you will be unable to use any of their towns until uh, you have won the noble war and that resets standings with those raiding starts are very powerful starts there's actually a new start in the dlc northern raiders it starts you hostile to two deserters starts you hostile to one uh, and you can go hostile anytime you want to any faction by holding down alt as you left click on uh, one of their companies to attack it and it is an incredible source of money and gear uh, especially in the early game and they're very doable fights for a long period of time um, that's certainly one way to get gear, uh, but it will be aware going into that. I, I probably raid about one in four of my games, and that's just mostly to do with the fact that I don't always want to take that start. I find it a little bit restrictive in terms of which places I can go, uh, I have which brothers I can recruit. It can be a very powerful start, but it's not always the most fun. So decide if you're raiding. Go after raiders and poachers and thugs early and marksmen early. Um, you can fight early game camps. It's worth looking for them. Uh, you can't spend too much time wandering around in the woods looking for camps because time is progressing and enemies scale with time uh, and the camp scale with time. And you want to be rapidly acquiring gear to get ahead of that curve as soon as you possibly can. Uh, and you're not making money wandering around the camps. But if you're potentially, uh, if we walk out of here, if you're potentially moving between one town and another town and the route you can like duck, duck 
off the off the road for a second onto a mountain and get good visibility for a second and find a small camp of zombies that'd be great zombie camps uh, will give you uh, armor so you can do the same kind of strategy you would do versus raiders to puncture down zombies to pick to take out their gear um, small orc camps can give you gear They'll, um, they're a little bit more dangerous a little bit later and of course the humanoid camps are the types of things you're looking for um, one of the big complaints and problems i see people run into is they've done an excellent job of farming uh, enemy uh, groups like raiders or thugs or uh, zombies and have picked up up to 115 gear which tends to be the gear that the most of the, the raiders stop at and they stall there they are not really geared enough to continue on to fight bigger fights like orcs are still very difficult for them uh, and cause a lot of brother losses and the camps are scaling up and they're stuck at 115 gear what next I recommend four different ways to get past the 115 kind of stall point, right? The first is Fallen Heroes. Fallen Heroes are your friends. Fallen Heroes are amazing. They have a source, they are a chance of a two-handed weapon, uh, particularly as the game gets going a little bit. I think it's a lower chance in the very early game, although I'm not entirely certain about that. But they also have 260 and 240 and 170 gear. It's heavy. Uh, but those are the armor types that they're wearing. If you puncture down fallen heroes, and you will have to do it twice in most cases, but if, um, but if they are the last enemy on the map, you only have to do it once. But if you puncture down fallen heroes, their gear will drop. You want to puncture down fallen heroes. Uh, if you have strong uh, stamina backgrounds, and uh, there's a number of cheap, strong stamina backgrounds, such as messengers, farmhands, fishermen can be fine. There's a lot of roles, brawlers, wild men. All these early game backgrounds that are high stamina are excellent combined with fallen hero gear. Pick up their 240, their 260, and their 170 gear and use it. That's a huge upgrade in terms of the survivability of your brothers using that. Armor attachments are also a really nice segment into the mid game. Uh, if you take an armor, like for example, one of those fallen hero gears and slap a 30 or 40 patch on it, or even a 20 patch on it, it becomes quite good. Don't be afraid to use early game armor attachments. Most of the armor attachments that you want in the late game are farmed off of creatures anyways. So the stuff that drops is basically just a way to catapult yourself into the mid game. Um, Brigand leaders are another excellent source of armor. They are often running around in 140s, 150s, or even higher, sometimes 210s. Uh, anytime you see a leader, if you can possibly take that camp with, uh, with acceptable losses, do it. Don't be afraid to lose brothers to accomplish objectives, especially in the early game. If you look at these brothers, a lot of these brothers should not survive to the late game. We don't want these brothers surviving to the late game because they're not very good. Uh, die now. Uh, early frontline, and even decent frontline, these are brothers that I am happy to sacrifice for an objective of an objective if it's a, if the objective is going to push my company's uh, survival uh, into, into a higher bracket, basically. And then the fourth one that you can do is noble armies. Noble armies is another decent, um, a decent way to do that. If you do do the raiding strategy, uh, the noble footmen can wear up to like 150, I think, or at least the groups can have up to 150. The sergeants can have like 210 armor, etc. So you can find stuff there. And then finally, I guess there's five, not four. And then finally, if you're really stalled, you can purchase the next tier of armor off of a town. Uh, it's very expensive to do so, so you want good standings with the town. You should probably focus on farming missions for that town ahead of time if you want to do that. And it's often capable, it's often possible to get buy like a 210 armor at a fairly reasonable price from one of those early game towns. Okay, um, let's talk about some other things that people seem to struggle with in the early game. Uh, for me, the early game is almost always a race to find archers. There aren't a lot of backgrounds in the game that are good archers. Um, you can check that uh, the uh, brothers by the background of brothers uh, portion of the spreadsheet linked in the description uh, to find what brothers you're looking for. But in general, it's hunters, poachers, uh, witch hunters, maybe bowyers, and that's about it for ranged units. So your early game is often spent going town to town looking for early game units. The goal behind this is find archers. Archers are going to carry you through the mid game. Archers allow you to fight goblins easily, and goblins are a high chance of famed items and a pain in the ass to fight without archers. Goblin, uh, archers allow you to fight raiders easily. If you have enough archers, the raiders are mostly coming to you. It's also a fairly safe way of dealing damage from range. Archers are going to allow you to fight unholds a little bit later. They're one of the ways that lets you easily kill necromancers, so you can take on undead camps fairly, uh, fairly early and fairly easily uh, with higher rewards and higher gear chances there without dying to the necromancer respawns. They're, they're going to allow you to win noble so if you do engage in a, a caravan raiding or if you have a, a first 
the first crisis being the noble crisis, then archers are going to be your friends as well. It's just an all around very excellent early game damage dealer that allows you to have a lot of flexibility in the enemies you can engage and therefore the equipment that you can pick up. So the early game for me is often about picking up uh, archers. Yes, I will certainly roll on high probability uh, backgrounds for other clap for the frontliners and i do need a frontline but what i'm really looking for and what i'm going to be spending the bulk of my recruitment money on is high chance archers from those backgrounds that i just mentioned um also something to mention um i'll link you guys to my build sheet but some of the early game builds are going to be a little bit different a lot of the early game builds are about prioritizing just survival so on something like this guy the early frontliner who i'm not expecting to live very long but if he does live very long um, i'm going to build him for the maximum amount of impact in the early game i'm going to open with colossus for hp to keep him alive and minimize the number of injuries i'm going to go into gifted then i'm going to go into rotate for uh keeping a brother other brothers alive particularly rotate is particularly value on uh particularly valuable on low low value brothers so they can rotate into dangerous situations and same brothers you care about um, then we'll probably go run into recover because being able to rotate regularly is important and then uh underdog into one of the tank stats either battleforge or nimble based basically on how much fatigue they have if they have enough fatigue to use heavy armor and it's going to be battleforge if i don't have a heavy armor or they don't have enough fatigue it's going to be nimble um and this will be basically especially on an early game character who i'm expecting to die it's going to be basically just conveniently located uh which one i do and then into indomitable and then into whatever else you want fast adaptation weapon spec it doesn't really matter the point is to get stats as soon as many stats as you can get early game that are going to keep your brothers alive and keep you able to accomplish goals um all right Finally, some of the gear to prioritize in fights. Uh, pikes are an excellent uh, leveling uh, weapon. They are a back rank reach weapon that has fairly good armor penetration, fairly good damage values, and has a plus accuracy modifier. Uh, putting brothers in the back rank allows you to level them safely. Uh, and having a good weapon to do that with is really uh, essential. So if you find raiders with pikes, raiders with pikes are a great pickup. Uh, focus on killing the pike before it gets to swing very much. Um, if you let it swing very much, the durability of the weapon will decrease and the chance that it drops will decrease as well. Um, try to aim for 110 and 115 gear. These are very, very powerful early game armors that you can pick up uh, relatively early. Um, prioritize those with things like flails and daggers. Flails are another thing you'd really like to get. Tier 2 and Tier 3 flails are, are a very efficient way to kill raiders. A lot of raiders don't bring headgear. Uh, so you can find raiders with just a bare skull who uh, are easy to kill then with your flails, allows you to force multiply a little bit and also allows you to get gear. If they don't have any headgear and you kill them only through headshots, which you can do with the second attack of flails, then you have a much higher chance of getting their chest armor to drop. Uh, and then any two-handed weapon is a fairly good pickup in the early game as well. Not so much, I guess not any any game weapon, but like uh, the woodcutter's axe is garbage, but like the, the mace that stuns and dazes is pretty good. The hammer for stagger is okay. Any two-handed sword is excellent. The war brand is excellent. Getting weapons that have some flexibility, uh, the, the line attack that swords have is great versus geist. Um, swords are a very good early game weapon because of their accuracy modifier and getting uh, damage on your brothers in the early game so that you can kill targets faster than they cause threats to you is a really, really good way to do this. Okay, a lot of information here. And I know I talk very quickly. Hopefully the visuals help explain some of the concepts that I'm talking about. Uh, and as I, as I mentioned earlier in this video, I now have uh, guide videos for every single fight, including early game Raider fights. So if you want to see these fights broken down a little bit more, check out those videos. But in general, that is the strategy that I am looking for in uh, my early game play. To recap, fight humanoids, uh, try to take smart payment missions uh, so that you're moving in a smart movement pattern. Don't be afraid to poke your head into the wilds. There can be good loot there, uh, but be aware that all the time you're doing that is spent, uh, is, is wasted time unless you are actually taking on camps in there. Uh, prioritize finding ranged units, but uh, also you need the frontliners. Uh, evaluate how good your brothers are because you will lose brothers. And part of, um, part of this game is both losing the brothers, but also understanding that you want to lose the bad brothers so the good brothers have a chance to survive. So protect good brothers by keeping them off the flanks, putting them in the back uh, with reach weapons, uh, and otherwise knowing in, on, on the combat map, knowing which brothers are high value versus low, brother, uh, low value. Um, Try to accelerate your gear progress through fighting raiders and then fighting fallen heroes, brigand leaders, potentially noble armies, armor attachments, and if need be, some small purchases of armor. 
Um, be aware of what types of towns are going to be your friend, your friends. So uh, good trade goods or high recruitment chances from like barracks or that type of things or types of towns to focus on. Uh, and that's kind of about it. And in each fight, prioritize, know which weapons and armors to prioritize. All right, guys, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave me comments and uh, feedback in the, uh, the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.